It gives me enormous pleasure to welcome uh, her to Toronto this evening, uh, a very, very, very fine writer and accomplished uh, human being. Uh, would you please give a, a warm and a gracious welcome to Lady Antonia? And it's the only title the book could have. Um, well, what happened was, it was January the 8th, 1975, and there was a production of Harold's play, The Birthday Party, a revival, you know, it's revived all the time. And, and it was directed by my brother-in-law, Kevin Billington. And so I went to it, and there was a party afterwards at the Billington's house, and I went to that too, and I was rather disappointed not to sit next to Harold. I thought he looked rather fascinating. But there were other interesting people and the actors. And time went on, and then two neighbors of mine offered me a lift home, and I said, right. I said, just wait one moment. I must just, I haven't said a word to Harold Pinter all evening. I must go and say, wonderful play, marvelous actors, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll come back to you. And so I went over and Harold was sitting. And I said, wonderful play, marvelous actors, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and now I must be off. And he looked up. He had these incredibly bright black eyes. He looked up and said to me, must you go? And I thought, must take children to school very early in the morning, must go <laughs> shopping at Safeways, um, must write King Charles II. And I, <laughs> and I said, no, it's not absolutely essential. <laughs> First thing I must say is the book's in three parts. First bit goes the um, five years until five and a half years till we managed to get married. The middle part is 21 years and is really sort of our lives and different sections. And the last bit, seven chapters, is the seven years of his ordeal, as I put it, from when he was first diagnosed with cancer until his death. But, you know, many things happened. Um, so I, I think I have to say that first. When I well, I should also say I dreaded writing part three. It hung over me when I was writing part one. And then I thought the only thing to do if you dread something is to do it. Then at least you can't dread it. And so I wrote part three. And I'd done it, and I came back and did part two. Um, when I read the diaries about part three, the thing that really struck me was his incredible fortitude. So yes, I guess he did. I mean, he really... Um, he was extraordinary. Of course, there were moments of, it, it, it wasn't seven years of agony, and I hope the book is, doesn't it, you know, it was a very exciting moment, like when he won the Nobel Prize. Well, and then uh, very interesting things, like when he acted Beckett's Crap's Last Tape. But the, the fortitude was amazing, really. Mm. To, to get going on a really big subject, to do all the research, and I do all my own research, um, I think you got to believe you've got something new to say. Otherwise, why do it, you know? And I need to have that impulse uh, of real interest. It, I mean, Mary Queen of Scots was a childhood heroine. Uh, 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 something has to get you going. And in the case when my children were young, you have to be pretty inspired. And not only that, uh, but you have to have rigorous discipline. I think all mothers, and I don't want to exclude fathers, but all working parents who want to write at home um, have got to have a pretty strong discipline if they're going to do it, you know, because nobody's going to help you. I mean, my naughty children used to say that I would say to them, you can come in if you've broken a leg, but not otherwise. <laughs> it's absolutely untrue. <laughs> I mean, if they broke a leg, how would they get in? You know? <laughs> Harold was very generous, would give me presents and flowers, but best of all were the poems. So I quote them all throughout the book. And, um, but he used to circulate them a bit after he'd written them. And um, various friends of mine said, um, well, I don't envy you, Antonia, at all in any way, but I envy you the poems. And that was very nice. <laughs> I mean, I do t tell the story in my book, the only time we worked in the same room. 
um, after which I said never again, because we went on a holiday. We liked going to hotels. We had one house in London. We didn't have a country cottage or anything. And we preferred to go to hotels, and very good for writing in. And we went to this hotel, the Grand Hotel at Eastbourne. And um, we had two rooms, a bedroom and a sitting room. And the idea was that I'd work in the bedroom, which I liked doing. I was used to working in my bedroom because I could make it private. And he would work in the sitting room. And the bedroom had no sea view. So, and the sitting room was very large with a sea view. So I said, right, I will put my typewriter in, in the window and you can have all the rest of the sitting room. And we were there quite a long time. And during that time, I slogged out one chapter of King Charles II with some difficulty. And how walked about, he looked out of the window, and he smoked a black sobrani, which he did in those days, and he read The Guardian and read The Cricket and all of that, and sat about, and I never saw him work at all, and he wrote the whole of Portrayal. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, never again. <laughs> I didn't do it to be consoling, no. but it, it, uh, I did it because I suddenly felt I had to a month after he died. Somebody asked me if I still kept diaries, and the whole thing came into my head like that. I mean, one month, almost exactly. But it was consoling because I relived the happy times, and he was alive, and I came out of it. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I was still in that stage. Perhaps I would never quite leave it of sort of wanting to say to him, so what do you think? Have I done a good job, you know? <laughs> and it, 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 I mean, I still have that. He had a wonderful tribute about the time I finished the book. Um, and I was sort of, as we must do, getting used to life alone, you know, and all the rest of it. And there was a tribute at the National Theatre in which all the great actors of our day came and voluntarily did his work. It was wonderful. Um, it's on, uh, on a DVD, actually. I don't know. It, it's really well worth seeing for people who like his work. And, um, you know, it was quite late. And then when I got home, I, our house got steps. And in the later years, when he had a lot of illness, I'd bustle up the steps, turn left into the drawing room where he was sitting in his chair, and tell him all about it. Darling, I was wonderful, you know, and all of that. And I hadn't done it for ages. I went up the steps, turned left in the drawing room, you know. And so I think the book was a way of going up the step, turning left. Um, and it was consoling. And I love talking about him, you see. And it gives me a wonderful excuse to talk about him. But also other people talk about him. It's not just me. I mean, people in England and also in France, where this book has come out, people come up with memories, things I didn't know, or their reactions. All of this is wonderful. Lovely. Thank you for it. <laughs>